I'll show you this. Ephesians 5, 22. Here we go. Ephesians 5, 22. This is what I saw. When God calls two people together, you got to know what words mean. Talked about that last week. Words are important because they, they, they mean different things to different people. I was at Ramsey Rizad show last night. Shout out to Ramsey. He did a great show last night. And they were talking about love, and clearly there is a, you, a new definition of what love is. And if you're, if, you're not, if you're single, you need to understand what love really means. One of the gentlemen's love him to life, one of my, one of my own, um, very clear th that I don't want love, I just want success. And I don't have time for love. If I'm dating someone, they have to understand I'm not going to commit to them because success is more important to me than this definition of love. That's the new phrase of the world that we live. That's why it's important that you have a world view. What your world view is, it's not a biblical word, but it is a word. Your world view helps define how you make decisions. Okay? This illustration was so profound to me. So when you're in a marriage situation, I want you to see that this, this container is not all the way full. Everybody comes half full depends on how broken they are, determines on how much water is in them. Maybe they were raped and molested. Maybe they saw their dad abuse their mom. Maybe they didn't have a father. And now they come to the table trying to marry someone who has more than them. The problem is, is if you keep trying to fill each other, y'all going to run out. Because there's not enough in each other to give each other what each other needs. I, I don't care how sexy they are. They don't have enough to fill you. See, when you move this out the way, and you put God in the center, you start to realize the areas that they can't fill you, this one can. So now, here's, here's the challenge, though. What most people do is instead of going to this to get their help, they try to get it from here. You know, we, I heard this term yesterday, and it jumped out on me. They said, um, you know, we need to make love. You, you can't make love because love is a decision. You can make an illusion of it, but you can't make it because love is a decision. It's not a feeling because feelings change. You know, that's why the vows are a decision. They have nothing to do with your feelings. They're all about, do you choose to stick with them? Do you choose? And that's why before you get together with your partner, life partner, you need to find out what is their definition of marriage. Because if they don't feel that if it's, if it's not working for me, I'm out, then that means that they will leave you at a drop of a dime when you can't fill them. And I don't care how much tricks you do in the bedroom, it ain't enough to fill the cup that needs to be filled. But here's the interesting thing. It says this. When you take God out of the equation and you put your mother there, your mother's not in the center. She looks like she's in the center, but she's leaning towards the party that she most supports. And when you try to get help from a non-neutral source, you're going to end up in a deficit. And you're going to be full, but this person's going to be empty because now this person is no longer just fighting you. They're fighting them too. 
I needed a smaller cup that I had a little, a little tiny. Give me that Gatorade bottle right there. This is what happens when you're trying to get full. It's good to go to people who are full of substance. Go to a counselor. They can help pour into you, pour into you and make you full again. But when you go to your single sister who's waiting on her tax return to make it, So you go to your friends who ain't been with nobody in years. Or you go to someone who's married but really single married. And they pour into you. And now your lens is cloudy. Because even though now y'all want to get back together, you can't see each other the way you're supposed to see each other because every time he talks to you, he's really talking to your cousin, your bald-headed auntie that had gave you this information. And now what he's trying to get purity from, he can't get purity out of because it's been contaminated by somebody. Because what you got to realize is even though they moved out of your relationship, they still got their seed in you. This is why, this is why it's so important that you make sure that if you have to get help, you get it from neutral sources. Because neutral sources have nothing to gain on what they're trying to express to you. I mean, do you have another water bottle? Yeah, I could use that one too. So, so here's, here's the challenge. Bring me that one too. Capacity is important because when you marry somebody who doesn't have the capacity and who's empty, you're going to spend all your days trying to fill them up. There's a leak. That's cool. That's what happens when you try to love broken people. They can't hold nothing you give them. You thought if you change your hair, it'll make a difference, then do a thing. You thought if you give them happiness, bought them a car, it'll make them happy. They can't hold nothing. Everything you give them, they can't hold it. That's why you got to investigate. I need to make sure that you're not cracked so that I try to feed you. And the more I try to hold you, the more you leak out. The more I try to work with you, the more you leak out. And some of us are saying, I don't know what to do anymore. I've tried everything and you will not be able to fix someone that is broken. You are not their savior. You are not their healer. You are not their deliverer and they will continue to leak on you because they don't have the capacity to hold you. They sucked all your life and wasted your good love. Until you get something that can conceal your brokenness. You need something that can hold your brokenness. You need something that can hold your leaks and nobody even know anything about it. 
You need someone that can hold your leaks. And even though you're broken and you're leaking right now, can't nobody see it? Can't nobody tell it? Because I got something that's covering me that's bigger than myself. And if you try to make a man cover you, they're going to drop you. If you try to get a woman to cover you, they're going to drop you. You need something stronger than yourself that can hold you in the midst of time. You need somebody bigger than you that's not intimidated by you. That's why you got to invest. You, you, you gave all of yourself. You know why you can't shout when people talk about visions and dreams? Because you empty. You know why you can't shout? Because you gave your heart to somebody. You gave your hopes to somebody. You gave your vision to somebody. And you have nothing left for yourself. And now your kids are asking you for a little bit of yourself. But you're so worn out because you've given yourself over to everybody else. And that is the problem with most people. They put all of their effort and got no return. If you don't keep God in the center, you're just going to keep leaking. You're going to get all the money in the world and keep leaking. Because you got to know this. When marriage brings pressure, you're just going to keep leaking even more. Because you got holes. Everybody got holes, but the question is, is who's holding you. I need to know who's holding you. When, when you feel like killing yourself, I need to know who's holding you. When you want to walk out the house, I need to know who's holding you. When you don't feel like coming back home, I need to know who's holding you. Because if God ain't holding you, then it's going to be a mess that all of us got to clean up. And, <laughs> and here it is, y'all. Did you notice how they had to come and clean this up? That's what happens when you get into a marriage and it gets messy. Other people who didn't want to have to leave their responsibility. Y'all ain't talking to me. Other people who had no plans on helping you, they had to go find napkins to clean up your leaking. And that's what I'm saying. Stop bringing other people in because of your brokenness. And if you don't fix it now, you're going to have other people mopping up your stuff, separating your stuff. Because if you don't know how to hold yourself. There's no marriage that's perfect. There's no relationship that's perfect. There's no friendship that's perfect. It works the same even in friendships. You need to keep God in the center of your friendships. And it should be like, I wish I had a core that would connect to all three of us. And as I feed you, you feed me. God feeds us. That's what friendships is. It's symbiotic. Everybody's getting fed from it. Be careful if you're in a relationship and you always leave this way. You drain me. You drain me. Make sure you go to relationships that feed you. If a fr and there's some seasons where I'm doing the feeding. But there should be a season when I'm down, you're feeding me. So I hope you got something out of my impromptu sermon of choice. This should be the, what the dating phase is, is just to find out how much your container has. If your container doesn't have anything, then let's not waste my time and my effort in pursuing something that's going nowhere. I'd rather be single and full. <laughs> I'd rather be single, traveling the world and full. Single, got some money in my account and full. 
single, eat what I want, where I want, how I want, and full, got my phone, ain't got to worry about nobody, and full, than to be broke, waiting on tax returns, waiting on a man to feed me, waiting on a woman to give me life, absolutely not. I'd rather be single and full. A single man just broken, waiting on a woman to, just so you can have a label. You're dealing with a leech. Swipes your car, don't even know it. Locks you out your house. Keys your car. I'd rather be single and full with God than to be single with an empty person. Just to show people online we happy. Just to show people online we made it. I finally got a boo, y'all. I finally got booed up, y'all. I'm not single and waiting no more. I got somebody. And all y'all thirsty. Single is the time to get full. It's time to get full. It's time to heal areas that are broken. It's time to make things of yourself. So full. Don't downgrade yourself because you're looking at a clock. Because some of you have the potential to get a five-bedroom spouse. But you settled for an apartment. There was a pastor who said this. Josh reminded me of it. I thought it was great. He said this. He said, when you are in relationships, it's very important that it's like a house, that you should learn how to start the relationship from the right places. You should start the relationship in the front of the house. And most of you are starting your relationships in the bedroom. And because you started it in the bedroom, even though you don't like them, you can't see it because you're cloudy. When you were sober-minded, you could see. But now that you've fallen in love, you can't stand. By your heads, let's pray. Father, thank you for everything, even the bottles with the cracks, to bring the presentation home. 